House leaders are closing in on a coronavirus relief deal that would include direct stimulus payments, according to sources familiar with the talks. The package is based largely on a $748 billion relief bill that a bipartisan group of Senate and House moderates unveiled Monday, plus a new round of stimulus checks, although at an amount lower than the $1,200 checks included in the CARES Act passed by Congress in March. Senate and House leaders are closing in on a coronavirus relief deal that would include direct stimulus payments, according to sources familiar with the talks. The package is based largely on a $748 billion relief bill that a bipartisan group of Senate and House moderates unveiled Monday, plus a new round of stimulus checks, although at an amount lower than the $1,200 checks included in the CARES Act passed by Congress in March.
Speaker and I worked into the evening alongside the Speaker of the House and the House Republican leader. We made major headway toward hammering out a targeted pandemic relief package that would be able to pass both chambers with bipartisan majorities. We committed to continuing these urgent discussions until we have an agreement. And we agreed we will not leave town until we've made law. The American people need more help. It's that simple. Further targeted relief is now months overdue. We need vaccine distribution money. We need to re-up the Paycheck Protection Program to save jobs. We need to continue to provide for laid off Americans. Congressional leaders on both sides are gonna keep working until we get this done. It's both my honor and my unhappy duty to offer one more parting tribute to a distinguished Senator who will leave us at the end of the 116th Congress. My good friend, the senior Senator from Kansas, Pat Roberts, is preparing to close out the longest congressional tenure the Sunflower State has ever seen. When Pat arrived in Washington as a freshman House member, he was a young man among giants, Byrd, Stevens, Dole. But over the past four decades, the name Roberts has come to define its own iconic brand of heartland statesmanship. Now, Pat is the first to admit <clears throat> he didn't establish that name all on his own. He inherited it from another great Kansan. Charles Wesley Roberts was a Marine, a journalist, and a leader in Republican politics. So get ready to experience some deja vu, Mr. President, because at age 16, our future colleague got to attend the 1952 convention that nominated Kansas' own General Eisenhower. And that early taste of politics planted a seed. Pat earned his own Marine Corps commission. In fact, he served with the first contingent to return to Iwo Jima, where his father had fought 15 years earlier. Then he decided to play another, to, to ply another family trade, like generations of Robert's men, including an abolitionist newspaper man three generations back, he took up journalism. Only then did Pat bring his talents here to Washington to Senator Frank Carlson's office, he impressed. And by the time his next boss, Keith Sebelius, announced his retirement, Pat was running out of excuses not to go on and run himself. Campaigning in Kansas' big first district required countless road trips across nearly half the state. But listening to neighbors, building relationships, and earning trust came naturally. Well, what's known as the Four Corners will be meeting in just about two hours. That is Democratic leadership Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, as well as GOP leaders Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy. On the agenda will be another year-end comprehensive spending deal as well as a COVID relief package. Now, already we know that the Treasury Secretary, Steven Mnuchin, spoke over the phone this afternoon for more than an hour with Nancy Pelosi. He'll be joining this 4 p.m. meeting by phone as well. And last night, McConnell and McCarthy issued this statement saying, it's a time for Republicans and Democrats in the Senate and the House to find consensus on COVID relief before the holidays. We hope our Democrat counterparts share our sense of urgency. Now, we have been expecting that lawmakers would strike a deal on a comprehensive spending deal sometime today and perhaps even release the legislative text. Clearly, a COVID relief compromise has been more elusive, but it does now appear that the wheels of Washington are turning, guys. And this meeting this afternoon is a significant and necessary step to hitting the Friday deadline and ensuring that the government does not run out of money and that Americans finally get relief. Back to you. Elon, when is the last day Congress is nominally supposed to be in session for this term? Because then it's over and we're back to January 3rd when the new Congress is seated. Friday is the last day that Congress is slated to be in session. But as we know, these deadlines do tend to slip. And I believe it was Senator Bernie Sanders who said, uh, to reporters that uh, we could be spending Christmas Eve together. So hopefully that doesn't happen, and hopefully this all gets wrapped up by the end of the week. That would be a fun group, wouldn't it? Christmas Eve with the Republicans <laughs> and the Democrats together. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.